Welcome back to The Breakfast once again. As always, we like to tell you what happened today in history. Sometimes it's sometime in the 16th century, maybe a lot earlier in the 90s. Uh, but today we are starting with a story from 2007. And it's uh, about a journalist who was a newspaper editor named Hrant Dink. Um, on this day in 2007, he was assassinated um, in uh, Istanbul. It was a newspaper editor who had written and spoken a lot about the Armenian genocide and was known very well for his efforts at a reconciliation between the Turkish people and the Armenians. Um, but of course, that was one of the things that created a lot of hate uh, towards him and a lot of controversy towards his person. Um, Heron Dink was, you know, at the time of his assassination on trial for violating what was called Article 301 of the Turkish Penal Code. And that article simply says that you can't insult Turkey, you can't insult the Turkish government, you can't insult Turkish um, uh, leaders or any, or you, maybe even their heroes. And so from some of his writings and some of the, his articles that he had spoken or he had you know, put out in the past, he was accused of violating Article 301 and insulting the Turkish people or the Turkish government simply by talking about the Armenian genocide. And for those who do not know much about that, that happened between 1915 and 1920 and led to the death of between 800,000 and 1.2 million Armenians. Um, so, of course, Rand Dink took it, up, took it upon himself and became a very popular newspaper editor because of the work that he did, uh, putting, you know, information out about the genocide and trying to uh, unite, uh, you know, Turkish people and the Armenians. He, of course, prior to his death, had endured loads of death threats and hate mail coming his way. And, um, you know, just a week before his, his killing, he had already also written that he felt nervous because of the amount of hatred that was coming his way um, as a result of the articles that he had written. Um, and so it was on this day, um, on the 19th of January in 2007, that he was assassinated in Istanbul. It led to, of course, loads of com uh, conversations about, you know, their men in genocide. And, um, you know, Turkish leaders, Armenian uh, leaders also came together to celebrate his life. There was a, you know, huge memorial. Um, of course, uh, thousands of people also gathered um, after his death, you know, to celebrate his life and to talk about the things that he did, you know, via his uh, newspaper. I really don't want to talk much about the guy who killed him because um, I, I, don't, I don't want to celebrate a person like that. And so uh, today we are celebrating a great man, Hran Dink, and the work that he did in, you know, reuniting the Turks and the Armenians uh, simply by his, um, you know, editorial work in his newspaper. You know, hearing you talk about the story just reminds me about how dangerous the work we do is, to be honest. I mean, journalism could definitely be listed as one of the most dangerous professions. Because just for speaking of what's right, you know, someone could have your head on a plate. Mm. It's just so sad. I mean, look, this is the United Nations Observatory of Killed Journalists. It said since 1993, 1,430 journalists have been killed simply for speaking up for what's right, simply for speaking up for the truth. Yes. And that's just a shame. Uh, you know, it just goes against what countries claim to uphold when it comes to press freedom, free speech, and all of that. Uh, so sad. It also, you know, makes you, you know, uh, uh, or rather it puts, you know, a couple of people in, in mind, Edward Snowden. Um, and yes. um, what was this guy? I don't remember his name now. The one who, you know, has recently been, been extradited. Um, extradited. Is it uh, um, Assange? Is that yes, it? Julian Assange, okay. yes. Um, and of course, Delegiwa. Uh, some of the most popular <laughs> names that come to my mind. Um, you know, and of course, people who have had to bear the brunt and have to, had to uh, suffer a lot. Uh, because of information that they put out in the world and had to, you know, they basically, you know, had their lives changed, um, uh, you know, simply by being journalists. But anyway, today is all about Rant Dink and his death in 2007. Mm. I'm just happy we can move on to something lighter. This occurred January 19th <laughs> in the year 1967. So what happened was uh, a British-American rock band, uh, it, it was called... Fleetwood Mac. They were uh, they were banned in you know in the U.S. and on January 19, 1993, the band reunited to perform at the recently then you know elected U.S. president Bill Clinton's first inaugural gala. 
the group had faced issues. I mean, they had faced so much intra-band squabbling. You know how this happens, you know, when, you know, groups come together to sing, and then at the end of the day, money issues and all of that caused them to split. But they eventually came together and, uh, you know, they released the biggest album of all time, and it was uh, the candidates, Bill Clinton's unofficial theme song during his 1992 presidential campaign. And at the end of the day, you know, they, they, they played that song, performed that song. You know, it was an, basically an endless loop. I mean, do you know how much you must have li loved the song for you to play just that one song continuously on repeat? On repeat. <laughs> I mean, that song was just on loop for the entire night. You know, Clinton loved the song and uh, the, the recording of the song was called Don't Stop. Yeah, that style basically was it. The song was also played for Clinton's appearances at the 2004, 2008 and 2012 conventions. I mean, that man was a fan. The song, that band uh, was... Uh, it was one of its the most enduring hits. It picked at number three on the Billboard Singles Chart. And that event marked the first time that the band played together in six years. I mean, can you just imagine how yeah. the president must have loved you for a band to have split together, split apart, but, you know, to come together to perform, you know, at the president's inauguration. Now, this reminds me, many decades later in 2020, we see that uh, President Joe Biden, President-elect Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will be inaugurated Wednesday 20th, 2021, right? And uh, who's performing this time? Justin Timberlake. Lady Gaga. We have Lady Gaga. We have Demi Lovato. We have Kerry Washington, Jennifer Lopez, all performing at the inauguration of the U.S. president. And, uh, I'm know, not sure what Wednesday. Jennifer Lopez is going to be performing um, at the inauguration. I have no idea, <laughs> but these people, they just, you know, they've made it to the list. And I, I guess basically it's trying to celebrate art and culture, people who've made their mark in, you know, in the industry. And two points that I want to make. So the first one, of course, I always like to bring conversations down here to Nigeria. The first one is um, about how many bands we've had, you know, in our music, you know, history. We've not had that many of, you know, them. We've not had that many three, four-man bands, you know, that have been successful over time. The, mm -hmm. You know, maybe most successful, more Style than plus. one person, you know. I was in a band. <laughs> they were a music group a anyway. <laughs> um, you know, the P-Square, you know, brothers, which eventually that ship has capsized now. But as a band right now, have you heard of the cavemen? They're really good. Uh, well, yeah. Well, you know, so, so they're still in their, you know, teeth in stages. Let's see how long they last. Mm. You know, I'm talking of a band as big as, uh, you know, the uh, Fleetwood Mac. We're talking of, you know, the Coldplay. We're talking of, We had uh, you know, Highlife Band. Uh, we had of, High Life Band back in the day. Yes. I will, I'll give you that. The second point that I want to make, I hope I don't forget it now. Yes. So people who have performed at presidential inaugurations and campaigns mm -hmm. do not get the same energy here in Nigeria. Um, for everyone who, you know, had campaigned or, you know, every artist that was, you know, part of the campaigns in the 2014 elections, um, they have continued to receive backlash till today because people say, you brought in a government that we're not very, very fond of into power. And so when you decide that you're going to be performing at a president's inauguration, yeah. you need to be very sure in Nigeria that's that basically like an it's a great right? decision. Exactly. It's a great decision. Um, and people would say that, well, you were getting paid then, you know, for bringing a government into power. You're almost, you know, the same thing as endorsing the but government. But then you, know, you have the freedom to vote. You, you yes, might have been persuaded, yeah. but it was a choice at the uh, end of the day. Absolutely. But you better be sure that government does good. Yeah. Let's, so let's, 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 let's move on from this. We've, we've, had, we've had enough, uh, enough small talk on the breakfast. Let's now go into uh, deep, serious issues. We're talking about security here in Ondo State uh, right after the break. Do stay with us on the breakfast.